Welcome back everyone. Today I am going to be talking about i3. Now recently I did take my other ThinkPad that's currently running an i7 or an i5. This is my i7 I run on daily. But I have an i5 and I was putting uh, the new DWM build of LARBs from Luke Smith on it to see what all the hype was about DWM. Now, it is really cool. I like a lot of the stacking of the windows and how you can switch from master to slave windows and uh, just some of the functionality of it. The configuration was a little bit weird from what I'm used to, and it just reminded me that, hey, we're all in this because we get to pick whatever we want to do to our own systems. I really like i3 uh, based on whatever I want to do with it so far, and everything that I want to do, I can. Um, there's not really any reason for me to switch. I know that Luke has mentioned that he doesn't want to support i3 anymore. And it was just kind of that thing where it's gotten to the point that uh, maybe it's time to leave Uncle Luke. <laughs> like we, you know, we all, a lot of us started from LARBs. We see Luke's content. We start our own channels or we start messing around with the system. And um, over time, I've actually been able to contribute more and more to the LARBs repo with various scripts or certain things involving R or whatever. But, um, it's probably just time to do my own thing. And I am wanting to stick with i3. I've been modding my own system and doing whatever I want, learning different things about the Linux system, moving these files to the XDG standard in, in some way, and just playing around with the features. But recently what I did, and if you can see on the screen right now, is I changed a lot of stuff with my status bar. Now, personally, I don't really like the look of these of the emojis that were in the status bar by default from, I think it was the Joy Pixels font. Uh, I just didn't like how loud they were. Like the the plasticky, shiny look. Like there's one right here for the recording icon. I actually need to go in and change that script too. But I went through all these scripts and I changed a lot of the things that these scripts were doing, especially the battery one. I added several new uh, fields of that and I'll go through those. But I've removed the really flashy emojis and replaced it with like the font awesome ones that are basically just rendered as text kind of like before Luke f did the patch for the color emojis in ST it was like that font that flat just a text look and so what I did is apparently you can use like some of the web stack with uh, i3 and its display so I used a couple span elements with um, inline CSS changed the font colors of it used my grove box colors and basically modified my own um, status bar. And I was doing a little bit of research on i3, i3 blocks, and I've got a, a lot more research to do, but I'll show you what I've done for my own configuration recently. So on the left, I have my i3 configuration, and on the right is my i3 blocks. So the i3 configuration, I, I haven't changed too much with it because it just, um, you know, it just works. So I haven't really done too much with this. And a lot of the hotkeys that deal with programs and other things apparently are put into the SimpleX hotkey daemon. Simple stuff like that is stuff that I still learn every day, always learning more about this system and how things are put together. It's nice to be able to jump into something pre-made and then figure it out after the fact when you can use it daily without having to stop you know, and fix something every five seconds. Instead, you can just go maybe instead of... Uh, having to stop and restart and only going five miles per hour every every few minutes. I can just go 30 miles per hour, just truck on through. Oh, that's interesting. Take a detour, go back, and learn by just messing around and doing things in the system. And so one of the things I found was that the i3 config is for dealing with actual window management, things that touch windows, and then uh, the simple X hotkey daemon would be for things that aren't related to actual window management, it's just like, hey, open this program or do this action, etc. cetera. Uh, so I haven't changed too much of the i3 config. A lot of it was broken out, like there was a lot of extra spaces and line breaks between the letter key bindings and they weren't alphabetized, so I did that. But I don't really make too many changes to this. But one thing I did change, and actually I'll zoom in a little bit, is uh, right here, the bar. Now you can specify your font um, this one is the emoji font followed by the monospace font and it says you know, I'm using i3 blocks, where do I want it, the type I want. Uh, I haven't changed any of this. But one thing you can do is um, specify the colors that you want for your i3, uh, i3 blocks status bar. And I just use some Grovebox colors 
and changed a few things to be what I want. So like these different like highlighted window colors, these are different. If I make like a um, urgent workspace, you can see right here, this is like when something opens or updates in the background, I'm gonna open GIMP, which opens on Workspace 5. If I do that, you'll see that it starts glowing a little bit red. So that's like an urgent workspace. Um, go over there, close that. So these are some of the things that you can do with um, your focused, inactive, and urgent workspaces. You can specify uh, hex code colors, and I have that Vim plugin that lets you see like what the colors look like. And so in this way, I was modifying just the background of my status bar, um, which is just the default Grub, Grubbox background, and just changing some of these different things. This is really all I changed in the i3 config, but what I really spent like a good chunk of time doing this weekend uh, was messing with my i3 blocks configuration. So one thing I, I saw in some of the, you know, the Unix porn posts on Reddit or whatever else is people who have like the Arch logo in their status bars. And I think they might actually be using something else like Polybar or something. But um, I wanted it originally left aligned, but I settled for just changing some of the icons in here. But I copied and got the Arch logo as a emoji icon in there. Um, but there are several different fields that you can pass as arguments to i3 block modules. And it looks like it's basically an any file, like the INI configuration files where you have the brackets for the item, and then you have um, left-hand side, right-hand side, and an equal sign in the middle saying like, you know, key value pair. But what I've done is I've made a couple extra modules. I've changed a lot of them, changed their emojis, their colors, or the actual scripts behind them. You can do things like uh, interval, like how often you want this thing to update and refresh. Uh, signal, I'm that's something I need to look more into, but I know that it ha has something to do with saying like, send that particular module a signal or do something, and there's something in the scripts that happens with that. That's something I need to look into more. I'm going to be reading the i3 documentation in depth to actually really learn my window management system because I actually like i3, and I want to stick with it until I don't really care for it anymore, or I get bored and I want to try something different, like actually in-depth learning DWM or something else. But until then, I'm going to be trying to learn a little bit more about i3. Color will let you say like the um, color of the actual text that's outputted. You can specify a command. The command option up here will just say, hey, the name of the block is the command you're running, unless you override it with a command, actual command right there. Label is just this, you know, the icon that appears to the left of this of the output. And then it's just a bunch of different commands here. And several of them, you can see like with my git gutter stuff that I've modified or added. Um, with this one, I, you know, I took out the home, you know, the picture of a house emoji. I added the arch icon. I changed the color with some HTML and CSS. And, you know, I'm awking out just the memory so I can just see, you know, the usage. Um, I haven't, I did see Luke's video response to my, uh, pull request on GitHub for the battery issue with, um, pulling out multiple batteries. Like I have a slice battery and then my main battery, and I wanted to see them both at the same time, which is what that is doing. And he did this, uh, new script update where he did something like looping through every battery and doing this and that. But what I actually wanted to do was, um, just, you know, one script, do it simply. And I wanted it modular so I could just do this. I don't know if there's, his way is probably better, but I just left it this way and I'll show you what I changed with my battery script because I'm actually pretty proud of it. So I haven't changed too many of these, but I was going through a lot of them and customizing the fonts, the colors, the icons. And uh, I added one icon, a different icon for my YouTube subscriber count. Like I made a video about my script. I'll probably put that in a card or something up there. Um, if you want to watch that, but this will curl and uh, grep and awk out my subscriber count for my YouTube channel. I have a business YouTube channel for my leatherworking business that I have neglected for many, many months. And I'll get on news on that later. But this is also my leatherworking channel. So I have these and then I grabbed the crypto script from the current LARBs repo, changed it so I just has a dollar sign instead of taking up space in the status bar. I currently have Brave, so I'm running Brave now instead of Firefox, so I have Bat, and I will have links to all of that if you guys want to donate Bat to me, or LBC on Library. Uh, I have a couple of the other default modules that Luke set, but uh, again, I have changed a couple of them, and let's take a look at some of those. 
So I have several modules now, and like one, the one I'm most proud of right now is battery. So if I go to battery, I have set uh, all the notify send commands to use my new uh, emojis. I'm not using any of the gaudy emojis anymore, the ones that are look really loud and shiny or plasticky. Uh, I'm just using these font awesome, you know, flat looking emojis. And when I you know, click on the battery or something, it'll just display like this. This is how I wanted it. I wanted it less uh, colorful, I guess. And so what I'm doing is I set several different layer, layers, levels that um, will change the, uh, the color variable. And this color variable is built in the printf statement so that each of these batteries, depending on the current level of charge, if I zoom in here, you can see that um, if it's not charging, it has like this red square. I've never seen that. But if it's stagnant, if it's charging, it's got a plus. If it's charged fully, it's got a lightning bolt. If it's very low, it becomes an exclamation point. And because it's all a battery, the internal symbol is what changes, but also the color. And it uses Grubbox colors. So I'm really happy with that, is that when this gets be below 85%, uh, it'll turn you know, a dark yellow or a light yellow. When it's below 65, it'll turn a dark yellow. 50, it gets orange. 25, it becomes red. And if it's um, anything below that, it'll just be like red with a warning exclamation battery. And it just uses a bunch of linked sed commands and then adds in that, you know, that warning battery. A couple things to make sure that if it's warning and low, that only one of those battery icons displays. And it's just really cool that over time, it'll just, the battery will discharge, it'll change colors, the symbol inside the battery will change. And that's what I did with the battery um, script. And I'm kind of happy with how it turned out. I like how my new status bar is. It looks a lot more, well, Grove boxy, and I really do like Grove box a lot. So it's my favorite theme. And if I ever do change, I'm probably gonna go with Nord. But uh, for now, I'm still just eating up the Grove box. So what else do we have here? Um, I added the crypto module from the Larbs build. Uh, crypto um, made no changes to this other than just like you know commenting out the ones I don't care about. I'm only using bat and LBC. Um, well, for the print statement, I just have um, instead of printing out the actual prices, which is what it would have done, which is what takes up the whole line of the status bar, is I just print out the icon and then make you know format the icon so it's like that. And clicking on it still sends me the information I need. But this way, it's not clogging my status bar with a bunch of extra text, which I should probably do for some of these other things, to be honest. But that is what I've done with the crypto module. Uh, what other interesting ones did I change or mess with? Um, mm -mm -mm. Mailbox, internet, moon phase. Uh, yeah, I'll show you the YouTube one. I'm still looking into new dot file management systems so that I can easily, you know, have all this stuff available because currently my dot file management system is uh, crap. It's just me copying stuff to a directory and pushing changes, so it's not really ideal. So I'm I have it on my to do list as like the next thing to look into uh, GNU Sto and RCM or whatever that other thing that um, some of you guys have mentioned to me before. That will be something I look into very soon because I need a better system. But I currently just have um, you know, my subscriptions, my business channel subscriptions, and then printf. I just add you know, my different icons, two different strings, and then add the variables. And then all that goes into the message variable, and I echo the message variable. And that's what this is. And well, what I plan to do with this script and a couple of the other ones that I've made custom, excuse me, like this rune one right here, is I want to add those clickable options where it actually gives you like information and text when you actually click on it like that with notify send. I will be doing that in the future as for, I just got a million other things to do as well. But one thing I'm also really happy with is just this, uh, the news boat icon is not like a picture of a newspaper and just looking like a far off into the distance white square. It actually looks like an RSS feed logo, which I'm happy about pack packages. So like if I actually have um, upgrades, it's a package icon. So I still need to go back and fix some of these emojis, the ones that have not been um, replaced with the font awesome ones. Those are all going to be changed eventually. Um, I'll get around to that. But 
Yes, that is where I've been uh, sitting at lately. I, I've really enjoyed working on i3, doing all this stuff this weekend. It was not that difficult once I read some documentation, looked at some examples, and just started fiddling with some stuff. I, I really like i3, so I'm going to be diving into it a little bit more, learning it in depth. And because I have my other my other system, I can actually just test out DWM without having to like move my files or transition anything over, uh, because I'd have to like like everything I'm doing right now. I need to do a, a better way. So my backups, I'm currently doing rsync with a custom script. It's kind of messy. I just need to set up a better way of doing that. Uh, GNU Sto or whatever for dot file management. That's coming too, and then just a million other things. I also have my leatherworking business I'm expanding at the moment. Um, just got some new tools, uh, sewing machines, so I can actually get some work done faster. Uh, I have a channel on YouTube for my leatherworking business that I will put somewhere, probably in the comment. And um, yeah, I, I didn't wanna like post any of that stuff on this channel, because this is kind of like more of my, my tech theme channel, and I wasn't sure about how like two things with such a different, like. It's like a great dichotomy there, like polar, this, that. So I didn't want to like put both things on the same channel. But yeah, so there's that channel as well. But uh, I will be putting more videos on there, most likely when I start getting some more of the equipment. I had a request to actually put out a video of how I make one of my leather wallets, because I actually make and I uh, made my own wallet and sell them. So... A lot of things to come. I will be posting more probably about i3 in the future as I discover cool little nifty things. Um, and then I have probably a lot more modding to do on i3 blocks. So that's what I've been up to this weekend and why this video is a little bit later than usual is because I got lost in i3 blocks customization. So thanks for watching. That's all for now. And a quick shout out to my very first Patreon supporter, Devin. Thank you, Devin, for being the very first one on Patreon. You guys can check out my Patreon there and uh, some cool rewards in there. If you guys want to take advantage of those, just check it out. Links in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.